Thus, the 2022 Toyota Hilux, the newest entry from Toyota in the Indian market. And I must say, what an entry this is. Because the thing is, this car is one heck of a car. And in this video, I'm going to explain everything regarding this car to you guys. Talking about styling, features, performance, practicality, comfort, everything. So without any further ado, let's get started and talk about the Toyota Hilux. But before we start this review, I would like to especially thank Pioneer Toyota, which is an official Toyota dealership here in the Chandigarh area. They're the ones responsible for giving me this car for a review. If you have any questions regarding the Toyota Hilux or any Toyota car for that matter, you can contact them using the links in the description down below. But without any further ado, let's finally start with the review and talk about the styling of the Hilux. Now, let's just get the obvious out of the way. This is one bold looking car. Bold yet a gorgeous car. Now, this emotional red color particularly looks very nice on this car. The way this car just fits in, the headlamps which are just a piece of art. You know, you get these DRL strips over here, a projector headlamp LED setup along with indicators given on the side they look very very good uh, the chrome garnish grille in this car which is very very big to cool that absolutely massive diesel engine which we will talk about in just a moment that grille looks very nice as well uh, the way we have piano black finishes given over here um, with the fog lamps they tie up with the car so very well that it just looks like one car that someone with good taste has developed as soon as we come on to the side profile of this car, there are two things very, very clear. That this, first of all, is not a small car. Quite lengthy. The second thing is that this is not also a short car because my height is 6 feet 2 and you can see this car comes at par with me. Which means that getting in and out of the car is a little difficult. That is why Toyota has done two things. One, given you a side step over here which is very useful in terms of getting in and out and then also given you grab handles throughout the car, which is pretty cool. But yes, if we talk about the uh, styling cues of this car, first of all, the alloy wheels of this car look very good. 18 inch alloy wheels, so they are pretty big as well. So going along with the massive size, they look very nice on the car. But also one more thing is that this car gets a lot of chrome treatment but according to the size of the car i think this is pretty much apt for the car first of all you get chrome over here you get a chrome badging like i told you you also get chrome along the window sills of the car and you also get chrome handles in the car with request sensors for the driver and passenger both which is pretty cool and now finally coming on to the rear profile of this car one thing that i absolutely love is the tail lamp design for the car i am drop dead in love with the way the tail lamps of this car look the led look finishes the car properly but then few other things we get the toyota badging over here again in chrome you get a complete chrome handle in this car and you get the hilux badging finished in chrome again but one thing about the door of this car given back here this is pretty heavy i mean honestly if you have this car this is all you need in terms of gym a very heavy door but it just goes to show the type of build quality that Toyota has given in the car, which is a big thumbs up from my side. But yes, uh, down below over here as well, chrome is still not finished because even the bumper of this car has chrome inserts over here. You get a step integrated within the bumper. So if you wanted to step on and see what is inside the bed of the car, you can do that pretty easily too. And integrated very smartly within this step is the license plate of the car as well. Now moving on inside the car, you can see this is a very well-built car. Uh, reminds me of the Toyota Fortuner as well, very similar styling to that. And a Toyota Fortuner is uh, a very respected car in India. So I think that people won't have an issue with the way the interior of the Hilux is designed as well. Now a few things that I really like about this interior is first of all, you get grab handles in this car all over because first of all, this car is pretty high up and even getting inside the car is uh, difficult so these grab handles really help over there 
um, the whole fit and finish for the interior is very solid as well not a big issue uh, over there so yes um, interior wise the Hilux gets a thumbs up from my side as well Starting up with the features of the Toyota Hilux, we're going to start with the steering wheel. As you can see, we have a rubberized plastic steering wheel in this car, uh, which is a multi-functioning one. So we have quite a few buttons given over here, which is for the infotainment display in this car. And then we have quite a few buttons over here as well. That is for the driver's display over there. And sneaking down below over here, you can see we have the cruise control knob for the car, which again is a great feature if you go on for long road trips. Behind the steering wheel, we have the normal knobs that we get in every other car. This is for the windscreen over here. And the other side, you can see for the headlamps, which, by the way, are automatic in this car, which is pretty cool. And now talking about the driver instrument cluster over here, you can see we have the tachometer for the car given over here, which goes all the way up to 6000, which obviously because it's a diesel engine, but you can rev it up to only 4400 ish RPMs. Then we have the engine temperature gauge over here and the speedometer over here and the fuel tank needle given right over there. In the middle, we get uh, the driver instrument display, which is very useful because you get a lot of features. Uh, right now, you can see we have the outside temperature. We have the current fuel economy. That is the real time fuel economy. Uh, we have the after reset fuel economy. That is uh, since you have reset the odometer, how much the fuel economy of the car has been. Then we have the range, which currently says refuel because obviously it's a showroom vehicle. After the odometer has been reset, uh, the average speed of the car has been five. Uh, we have the eco indicator, which is essentially a rating that the car gives you depending on how you drive. So uh, the better the score over here, the better fuel economy you will be getting in your car, which is quite cool. Uh, then we have the eco saving which tells us the fuel consumption of the car and after reset how much the fuel consumption has been and then we get the tire pressure monitoring system of the car given right over there which is pretty cool but then you can move uh, on towards the right which is the audio system for the car right now there is no audio playing so that's why it's just saying audio off uh, then we have the alerts for the car which right now is that you can depress the brake and start the engine because it's an accessory power right now and then last but not the least, you get the settings for the car, which you can then open to customize the display. All of this is pretty standard, but then again, a pretty useful display for the driver. So that was about the driver display, but we are far from done because we have so many things to talk about. We have this display, we have uh, very important features over here and one on the other side as well, which I will get to. But talking about this display, it is a very standard Toyota display, which you get in other cars as well. You got a similar one in the Fortuner. But uh, with that said, I will be posting a very detailed review of this very infotainment display as a separate video. So if you want to have a look at this display on how this works, what the different features are, how easy it is to use, we're going to talk about all of that in a separate video so if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel i suggest you do that on right now so that you get the notification when i post that video but then moving down below over here where we get uh, so many features for this car we get the completely automatic ac control system over here which is standard for such an expensive car uh, we have a dual zone ac in this car which means that you can set a separate temperature for the driver and then a separate temperature for the passenger which is pretty cool but then moving down below over here you get three different buttons which one of them is for the hill descent control of the car which means that if you are taking this car off-roading um, and you are going down a hill this will keep your car at a very steady speed and you won't lose control of the car so a very good safety feature you get traction control button over here so if for some reason one you wanted to turn off traction or you wanted to turn on the differential of the car which is given over here you can do that from over there so then again these buttons over here are for mostly the off-road capabilities of this car which let me tell you the hilux is very very capable of but then one more feature about this car which is very helpful off-roading is of this right here so you can see we have h2 written over here h4 written over here and then l4 written over here so h2 is for high range two-wheel drive h4 is for high range four-wheel drive and then l4 you guessed it is for low range four-wheel drive but as you can see i can switch from h2 to h4 very easily but then if i want to switch from h4 to l4 i have to first push this then switch it up over here which means that Toyota really wants you to confirm that yes you really want to go for l4 in this car which means low range 
because this is one mode that not everyone goes in and it is meant for extreme off-roading so it is really cool that the hilux is equipped with all of this next up moving on this side that's where you can see you get the 12 volt charging socket for the car along with a usb port now do remember that this small little hole over here is not meant for the aux port this is just the usb uh, some other miscellaneous features in this car include uh, two driving modes one is eco one is power pretty self-explanatory uh, you get uh, auto dimming irvm in this car and you also get one touch controls for all four windows in this car which is pretty cool and now let's talk about the performance of this car which is an ideal factor for the car because of the way it is designed in case you wanted to tow something heavy or keep something heavy in the bed of the truck or if you wanted to take this car in its true capabilities, that is off-roading. So performance plays a vital role. So let's talk about the engine. And remember when I said that the uh, rear door of this car is very heavy? Well, this is the definition of heavy. I mean, this is great shoulder workout. Really, I think that the Hilux is an amazing car. Not just is it a good transportation vehicle, you even get an in-house gym in the car. <laughs> Obviously, I am joking, but honestly, the build quality of this car is absolutely supreme. But yes, talking about the performance now, will we get a 2755cc diesel inline four turbocharged engine, which produces a maximum output of 201 brake horsepower and 500 Newton meters of torque, which are more than enough numbers for making this car a very capable car. So in case you wanted to tow something with the car, which this car can do, if you wanted to take something very heavy in the truck bed of this car, this car can do that. If you wanted to go uh, off-roading in this car and not just off-roading, extreme off-roading in the car, well, this car can do that as well. Well, talking about the transmission, in the standard variant of the car, you only get manual, whereas in the high variant, that is this one, you get manual and automatic. This particular car is the six-speed automatic transmission one. So starting with the practicality, we're going to start with the glove box. By the way, this car has two glove box, just like the Fortuner, one given up over here, which is pretty big. You can easily keep your car documents over here. And even with that, you still would have a little more space left to keep some stuff. Uh, and then we have another glove box given down over here. Uh, which just adds to the practicality and as you can see this is pretty large as well so in terms of keeping stuff in the glove box you won't have an issue moving to the center console as well you can see we have a very large storage cubby over there uh, for keeping your smartphone or other keys and coins you have two cup holders pretty large size as well so you can easily keep some bottles over here even behind the gear lever you can see we have one storage cubby over here which in this case i have kept the key but then you can keep some keys coins and other things over here um, not to mention we also have an armrest over here which is not adjustable but you can open it to reveal a very large storage cubby so in terms of practicality the Hilux is killing it right now but which even makes it better is that you actually have a household AC socket over here in terms of plugging something in so if you want to do that the Hilux is the car for you Moving to the rear seats, not only do we get to see seat pockets for both the passenger and for the driver's side seat, you also get to see grocery hooks on both the seats, which is just insane. Sadly, we don't get any storage cubby in near the AC vents of this car, which is weird to see. But one place you do get to see storage, that is two cup holders in the armrest of this car. And now coming on to the rear practicality, which is the most important one in this car, because you know, it's a truck after all. <laughs> Up until now, the interior practicality has been very cool for the car, but in front of the exterior practicality for the car, it is absolutely nothing because, well, at the end of the day, it is a truck we're talking about. So in terms of rear, you open this door over here and you can see we have this absolutely massive truck bed where you can keep a lot of stuff, you know, not only if you, not only for like commercial stuff, like if you wanted to tow something heavy or, you know, bring something uh, or, you know, transport something big in the car, you can obviously do that in the car. But even if you are like hardcore adventure guy or a person who loves camping, this is the perfect car for you. I mean, because obviously in the city, you have a full five seater cabin in the car, which you can uh, take your family along with, you know, have some fun with the, uh, in the city. But then if you wanted to get crazy over the weekends, go for a good camping trip, go for a good off-roading trip, 
This is the type of the car you want. But yes, one thing that I would like to say about the truck bed is that it is completely painted, which is a good thing in terms of aesthetics, but in terms of practicality, truly isn't. Because the thing is, when you're buying such a vehicle and you use it properly, there are some things that are going to scratch the paint very easily. I mean, there is no question over there. Paint scratches very easy. And if you're using this truck to keep something heavy or, you know, towing something, that will scratch the paint very easily. I think Toyota should have given like a rubberized truck bed for the car. Uh, obviously, you can get that as an accessory for the car, but I think they should have given it as standard. It's just because the way that this car has designed to be made, that rubberized truck bed would have made more sense. I'm now coming to the comfort section of this car. Uh, well, first of all, these leather seats are very comfortable. That's my initial impression. Uh, they grip me in well. Uh, they have good bolstering as well. So overall, a good experience. But in terms of other features, obviously, this being the front seat, you can adjust the seat. Uh, you have automatic controls for the driver's seat over here, front and back. And then you can adjust the backrest uh, front and back as well. But Keep in mind, this is only for the driver's side seat. For the passenger side seat, you get everything manual. You can adjust that as well. You know, height adjustability, moving the seat back and forth, um, the backrest back and forth. All of that can be done in that seat as well, but in manual. So that is one thing you need to keep in mind. But uh, for the driver, you get uh, adjustable steering wheel as well, front, back, up and down, which means a tilt and a telescopic one, which is very cool too. And uh, overall, in, I think in terms of comfort, this car has nothing to complain about. Um, it has all the essential basic features, according to me, and it just does the job well. But the rear seats is the place where I really am surprised because, you know, I was just sitting in the driver's side seat, as you guys saw, and I'm quite tall, six feet two. I adjusted the driver's seat according to me. And now coming to the rear seats, again, a six feet two person has around three or four inches of legroom available. That is amazing. I was not expecting it because honestly, I thought that the rear seats of this car would be a little congested because of the way the car has been designed. But that definitely isn't the case. Uh, the seat material obviously is the same as the front ones. We get the same leather seats back here. They have good support, good uh, comfortable experience back here too. Uh, in terms of the middle seat of this car, uh, there is a transmission tunnel, uh, quite substantial transmission tunnel, I must say. So I think the more uh, obvious thing would be to keep one leg on this side and the other leg on this side. Uh, but still, uh, the rear seat is not at all uncomfortable in the car. You can easily sit here just like in no any other normal family car. Uh, the rear seat, the middle seat experience is a little worse than the side ones, but then it is not at all uncomfortable. And it's not now finally we come on to the price for the car now we've talked about everything we've talked about how good this car looks we've talked about how practical this car is and then we've talked about how comfortable this car is but now i want to talk about the price of the car because for the standard variant of the car that is the base model the car starts at around 34 lakh rupees ex showroom price and this model that is the top end variant with automatic transmission costs you around 36.8 lakh rupees which i think is strategically good pricing for the car. Now people might perceive this as a little overpriced car but according to me it truly isn't. I wouldn't say that it's a cheap priced car but it is just okay as the industry standard because the thing is this is not a normal car. This is a car which is a great family car by the way but is also one of the most practical cars I have seen. Not only has this car got residential uses but this car is a very capable car off-roading off-road-wise and also commercially because of the way this car is built. So keeping all of that in mind, I think the price of this car is justified. But honestly, is this car for you? Well, that is the question I am here to answer. If you are a person who loves to go off-roading, you know, then obviously that's not even a question. The Hilux is for you. But if you are a person who is a family man, but also wants a car which is crazy enough to take off in the weekends to some place that no other car has gone, I think the Hilux is for you. If you are a person who has a job or is in, a, in the business which needs a kind of transportation here and there, but you need a personal vehicle for yourself, not just for your business, then the Hilux is for you. But for a person who wants a car for daily commuting from point A to point B and you know, but needs a little bit of a bigger car, then in my opinion, the Hilux is not the car you are looking for. In that case, 
you have a lot more options. But the Hilux is a very specific genre car. And for the people who find this car in their genre, I think this is one of the best vehicles on the road right now. But that's all for my review, guys. I hope you like this video. Please give us a thumbs up if you did. Comment down below your favorite part about this video or what you think about the Toyota Hilux. Share this video as much as you can and a subscribe to the channel would be absolutely amazing because it gives me so much motivation to create content for you guys. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.